Well, hi everyone. It's great to see you. I hope you had a great weekend and a happy Halloween. Um, I no longer have trick or treaters, although my my 15 year old did run around at the end of the night and check all the porches with the bowls and he did get some candy there for his sister and himself. So that was good. Um, I dressed up like my daughter. So if you follow me on Instagram, you can see my video where I did a great impression of her and she's thoroughly happy with me right now, which is a lot of fun. Um, but we're off to a great week. And this week, I'm super excited to welcome my friend Kathy McPhillips to the show. So I met Kathy um, through Content Marketing Institute and on Twitter. And now she is no longer there. She joined a new company in May. And so she is now the chief growth officer at the Marketing Artificial Intelligence Institute, where she oversees product growth, marketing sales, and customer experience. So I'm excited to learn from her today. She was VP of Marketing at the Content Marketing Institute and their flagship event, Content Marketing World, for almost a decade. She owned her own strategic marketing consultancy, focusing on nonprofit and service sector marketing and media after starting her career as media supervisor at Wise Advertising in Cleveland. She was part of my father's alma mater, Ohio University's Jerry L. Sloan Visiting Professionals in Public Relations Program, and regularly guest lectures at area college and universities, colleges and universities. Kathy was named a Folio Top Women in Media, a MarTech Exec 50 Women You Need to Know in MarTech, and currently sits on Ohio University's College of Business Marketing Advisory Board. So please join me in welcoming Kathy McPhillips. Hi, Kathy. I got to shorten that bio a little bit. That was <laughs> oh, this is a lot. Well, well I'm glad you. to have you here. Um, and did, did you hear that? My dad went to Ohio University. I did not know that. I was like, yeah. What? How about that? Yeah, he's a proud alum. Um, most of his college pictures are him like in front of a fraternity house, not doing any work. So oh, wow, we um, can tell. Yeah. We worked hard and we played hard. We yes. had a good time. We'll have to talk about yeah. that another time because I could talk about right. OU for days. Right. Oh, Bernie's here. Hi, Bernie. Hi, Bernie. <laughs> um, so good to see him. So we're glad that you're here. And I know you're in this new role at Marketing Artificial Intelligence Institute. It's a long word. I have to look at it before I say it. I know. So I, I want to kind of talk a little bit about artificial intelligence. I've always been one of those people, you know, everything I do is keeping it real. You know, we've got to have real conversations and real voices. But I do think, I know that there is a place for AI in what we do when we're talking about someone's brand, their voice. So kind of talk to us a little bit about that. How does AI play into social media engagement? Um, and, and how do you explain it to those of us who are completely lost? <laughs> well, the good news is, is that I'm learning. You know, I'm in kind of where you are right now. And I'm just, okay, tell me all about this. Is this, you know, really a good thing? Are technologies using it the right way? Are brands using it the right way? So I've been, you know, asking all these questions since I started. And Paul Reitzer, who is the founder, who's also an OU alum, and Mike Caput, who's the chief content officer, I, I every week I'm like, okay, I've got a list of questions for you. Um, <laughs> and it's just been really nice to hear them explain to me, like, it, AI isn't going to take your job away. It's going to evolve your job. Um, but there are things like, it's helping me draft some social media copy. Last week, actually, I used a tool called copy.ai to write some posts for social media for our event, which just happened last month, but it's happening next summer in person here in Cleveland. And I read it and I was like, that was pretty legit. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to tweak some things. But once I tweak it, then it just learns what I changed. And then next time I go in and have it help me again. So there is going to be a human component to it. You know, I'm not going to just say AI, good luck, and then post it and see what happens because, I mean, it's that's not right. You know, some of the stuff was incorrect. Um, but every time I'm doing it, it learns what I change and it does it better the next time. So I think that's the AI side of it. And there's also, you know, a lot of the tools I think people are using have an AI component. People just don't even know. They're concerned with what the use case is, what the outcome is. So I think if we look at it that way, it's just a little bit more understandable and a little bit more like, I'm okay, I'm willing to try. I'm willing to try this tool that can help me write copy faster, even if you don't right. know the AI's what's doing it, you know? Right, right. That's pretty cool. So what kind of led you to this new shift in your career? You've got all this experience under your belt and 10 years with CMI. What was the driving force to take you to this new place? 
and start learning a, a whole well, new I've Paul. I met Paul very shortly after I met Joe Pulitzi and we've been friends for a long time. And it's, you know, he's just a brilliant man. He um, runs an agency uh, here in Cleveland. And then he started into the AI world in about 2016. Just, you know, personally, he loved it. He's, re he's read so many books, every book on the topic. So he's like, I think this actually has some legs and I want to teach marketers how to use it, how to be responsible with it. Um, like I said, you know, this can go down a really bad path if marketers aren't using it the right way and, and everything. So he wants to really, um, you know, be this flagship place that we can teach marketers. Here's how you do it. Here's why you do it. Here's the right way. Here's the wrong way and things like that. And kind of be, um, you know, the steward of, of this, of marketing and AI. Um, and we, and we just, we talk, you know, we've, we talked a couple times a year, we'd go to breakfast and then we started talking over the winter and um, it just kind of evolved into, hey, we should do something together. So right. it was good. Yeah. It's been really yeah. good. That's great. So you mentioned a tool that you were using um, when you were writing copy. What are some other tools that people, whether they're in marketing or they're a small business owner, that they can use to really start to dig into AI, give it a shot, give it a try and see how it's going to work for them. What are some tools that you can recommend? Yeah. And I feel like I'm taking all of Mike and Paul's um, presentations <laughs> and I'm just pretending it's all my great advice, but you know, things like things you do that you repeat all the time, like writing social media, um, uh -huh. AB testing subject lines, um, looking at your analytics, if it's data driven or if it's repetitive and it's something that you do all the time, um, AI probably can help you. So, there are so many tools and I'm not going to jump into some, a lot of them, but a lot of them offer free two week trials. So like this copy.ai that I used last week, um, you know, Mike uses so many more tools because he's on the content creation side of things and he just knows more of them than I do. But, you know, I just tested it out. And if it, if it didn't work for me, it's a great tool. There's so many great tools, but they don't all make sense for me. You know, right. what makes sense for me might not make sense for you and, and vice versa. Um, so try it out. Try like a small use case. You don't need AI to like take over your whole marketing tech stack, but like maybe you can, you know, do some subject lines in your emails faster or it can draft a blog post for you or something like that. Just so you can see like, okay, that's something that makes sense for us. Or I spent just as long doing this as I would have without using the tool. So that's not, maybe not something that would make the most sense. Right. So, um, yeah, there's just so many th different things. And, you know, as technologies, I'm sure a lot of technologies we're all using right now are trying to get into that AI, you know, making their technology smarter. So I think it's going to become more of the norm than it is the exception as things progress. And for people out there creating content, like longer form content, they're writing blog posts, let's say, what kinds of ways can you use AI for that kind of instance? Yeah, so Mike just wrote a blog post. Well, he didn't write it. AI wrote it. He used a tool called hyperwrite.ai, um, and he plugged in what he wanted the topic to be, and hyperwrite wrote the blog post. And it, it's amazing. And I wish I had the link handy, but it's on our website. Um, if I can multitask, I'll, I'll pull it up, and or I'll, I'll tweet it out after, after we're done. Okay, that sounds um, great. But it was... And he's like, AI hey, wrote this blog post and it was really amazing. And he went through and I'm, and I don't, can't say for certain whether he had to go in and edit anything, but 99% okay. of it, the AI tool wrote, um, but there That's needs to be fascinating. Someone, it's totally fascinating. <laughs> and does there it needs sound to be real? Learned, pardon me? Does it sound real? Does it sound like a person it wrote it? That's it really so cool. Does. But like I said, some of the social media stuff I, I did, maybe I didn't enter the stuff right to begin with, you know, I'm still learning as I'm going along. But that was like, that just that doesn't sound right or whatever the case may be. But perhaps he's trained this hyper right to kind of know what, you know, Mike's tone and and things right. like that. Um, but that was really cool. But I think like longer form things um, and I'll and I'll put the link in um, the actual blog post that Mo Mike wrote um, and later. But what was I just saying? I about think. Mike and kind of training the, the system. Yeah, before that, like, before, I saw your, before I saw your link. Anyway, um, oh, the longer form stuff. Like you have to, there has to be someone on the other end of this, reading it, adding right. to it, adding yeah. your voice, adding your flair, um, 
you know, I, I actually wrote some social this, this morning for later this week. And like, I'm sure some writers are like, that's like blasphemy. AI is not going, you know, I'm an amazing writer. I pride myself on that. AI shouldn't be doing that. I mean, just try it. Maybe it's going to take an idea you had and give you, you know, that this draft that you can at least work from versus starting completely from a blank page. Right. Right. And if you love writing from a blank page, then don't use it. Use it for something else. Use it right, for right, right. your analytics so you can spend more time on your writing. Right. That's good advice. So when you're thinking about sort of like a marketing technology versus a marketing technology powered by AI, how do you kind of get your head around, okay, I'm going to try this. And then what if you work for a company where you've got a supervisor who's like, no way, we're not doing this. How do you sort of get that person on board, warm them up to this idea that AI may actually help us and still keep our brand persona sounding authentic? Yeah. So I'm very big of the ask for forgiveness versus permission. So like just take a tool like HyperWrite or copy.ai or, you know, there are so many. You can go to our website and find, you know, tons of different use cases um, and just test it out and then go to your man, you know, especially if they're free, you know, try out one thing and then right. go and say, I saved five hours doing this this way. Um, and here's the outcome. And oh, by the way, it is, it is AI powered. Um, yeah. Don't go in and be like, hey, I want to test out AI because that's like, ah, you know, if you go in and you can say, here's why I want to use it. And here's what I can do with this time that I just saved or, you know, here's some efficiencies I found, you know, go in with how, you know, what the outcome is, what, what it means yeah. for the business. Yeah, I'm totally going to try this. I actually have a blog post to write this week. I'm going to give it a shot. I'm going to put some keywords in and some of the thoughts that I have written down in my scribbly notes. Yeah. Let's see what it comes up with. <laughs> and I'll report back. I'm, okay. I'm really excited. I'm okay. going to try this hyperwrite.ai. <laughs> and there are so many that that's just one that, you know, we've just used recently. Okay. Well, that's exciting. It's yeah. exciting. You're like entering this kind of like, you're like on a new frontier of social. I mean, it is. you know, it's even keeping fun. voices real all these years. And now you're like kind of on this forefront of where it's headed. So it's exciting. It's excited, exciting to see where you've landed. Yeah. And one other thing we did, um, so we had an event, Macon, which took place um, in the fall. And one of our sponsors, Celtra, with, with a C C E L T R A, they were talking in their presentation about how they're an ad, um, AI powered advertising technology where you can put in your piece of creative and say it's a 728 by 90. And you also need a 300 by 250, and you need Facebook sizes, LinkedIn size, you know, you need. 12 versions of something. You can plug in your one ad and it'll resize them all for you, which is cool, but a lot of other places do that. But what uh -huh. Celtra does is say you move the logo over here a little bit and you tweak the copy or you change the background color. Not only does it then version out all the versions on what you want, um, it learns what you did. It remembers what you oh, did. Wow. So that next time you do it, it knows, okay, Kathy likes the logo this size or whatever the case may be. Um, so that AI is constantly learning. So when we were That's doing this presentation, I was listening and I was like, oh my gosh, I just versioned out as, you know, four just different creatives for all, you know, for the event times right. 12 sizes. So I'm like, I just did 48 versions of my own. Gosh, that would have been really, really useful. You know, what else I right. done at that time? So, um, and well, again, it's not per, like they aren't perfect yet. Um, right. I don't know if yet's even if that yet will come, but I mean, they're improving so much, but they have to improve with someone inputting data and putting right. stuff to be able right. to learn and learn and learn. So I've That's learned really cool. You know, I've and, learned a ton in the last 14 minutes. This is fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to try it. Super cool. Thanks, yeah. Kathy. Yeah. Thanks. Sure. Thanks for sharing all of this information with us and thanks for coming on the show. And I will tell everyone there's one more place where you can find Kathy if you get on your bike early in the morning, uh, you can find Kathy <laughs> on Peloton. <laughs> so, so I had to um, change, I had to change, this probably is not appropriate for your live stream, but I had to change my username because it was just my name because oh. someone tried to connect with me on LinkedIn. And it was like this, oh, man, that said, this man that said, oh, I think I follow you on, oh, I saw you biking. I wanted to connect in person. I was like, okay, that is not. Yeah, that's kind of weird. That's Although cool. I will tell you, when I first got on Peloton, I started, um, you know, following Olivia's groups on mm -hmm. Facebook and Instagram because I love, you know, I love all her stuff. 
And someone from the Facebook group then friended me and I was like, whoa, that's a little too close. But then I saw we had mutual friends. So I reached out to the friend. She's like, yes, she's our cousin. You, you, it's fine. Hilarious. So these people on the Facebook group have like totally become my real friends. My kids are like, you don't really know these people. They're not real people. I'm like, yes, they are. I talk to them more than I talk to you. Like, we talk all day long. We, so, talk, so we, um, we get so much in before 7 a.m. Right, exactly. So follow Kathy on Peloton, but if you don't know her, maybe not on LinkedIn. That's a little creepy. Um, but well, this, makes sense. this makes sense for LinkedIn. Yes, yes. For this, absolutely. Definitely. Reach out to Kathy via Twitter or through LinkedIn and ask any of your AI questions. Um, but it can work for large business, small business, social media, content writing. I'm excited. You've like inspired me to give it a shot because I've really shied away from AI because I'm always trying to keep things in my voice or the voice of the brands I'm working with. But I'm going to give this a shot and see if I can train something to start talking in that voice and support what we're doing. So I'm excited. And the thing is, is like five months ago, eight months ago, I did too. But oh. like, so, you know, people that know me, you know, knew me at Sam are like, well, you've really gone all in. I'm like, I have <laughs> because I understand it now. Right. So it's just being a little bit open and, to, and to try new things and just be a little adventurous. And what's the worst case? You take this free trial for two weeks and you don't, it doesn't make sense. Right. Right. But just kind of yeah. knowing what's going on in the industry because it's, it's moving fast. Yeah. Well, that's fascinating. Well, thank you for sharing all of this. I'm so happy that you were able to be here today. And I thank you for being my guest and my friend. And I want to thank everyone for um, tuning in today and let you know that next week I have another friend who I just hang out with, hung out with in Cleveland. And when we'll be back on the show, she was here in the beginning when I first started and didn't know what I was doing. And I think half the screen was just plain black. <laughs> So there were no faces on it at all. Um, Anne was on with our other friend, Jeanette Spear. But Anne's going to be back next week, and I'm excited to have her. She'll be coming in from Houston to join us. And um, thanks for coming. Have a great week, everybody.